Mr. Marshi, how much better is your approach compared to others? Well, I mean, it's very hard to define what is better, right? Because we don't have upper bounds on what is the possible performance of an automatic AI-based portfolio manager. So what we can tell is that our strategy is completely different from what we, we can see is out there. Because what we do is really looking at fundamental data, as a discretionary portfolio manager would do, and come up immediately with portfolios rather than selection of stocks. So there is no prior that we require from the financial sector, from the industry, to select which companies to take and what type of portfolio to build. And I think putting everything all together, this is really the key. And we can say that we reached this point because my background is computer science and artificial intelligence. So I don't have all this bias on what works in finance. And that's why we let the machine do its job. What distinguishes your approach from other business models? Quantenstein is a joint venture between two companies. As I said, I'm co-founder at the first company, which is Nascence, which is an AI company based in Lugano, which aims at delivering artificial general intelligence through neural network and intelligent automation. And the other company is Akatis Investment, which is a very famous asset manager based in Frankfurt in business since 1994. And with Quantenstein, what we try to bring to the table is the best experts in long-term value investing and the best experts in AI and find a common ground with a positive feedback loop between the two companies to grow as much as possible and as quick as possible. Why is artificial intelligence superior to classic portfolio management? Well, once again, it depends on the definition of being superior. What I can tell is that our system, by simply looking at fundamental data, is taking decisions which, in principle, are um, looking at every possible interaction between all the input variables. Whereas a human, we know, is limited. That's why usually you have a short list of companies that you have to look one after the other before taking your decision. But the AI machine is just looking at all of them. But at the same time, we're kind of limited because what we can look for is only fundamental data at the moment. And a discretionary portfolio manager will always have feedback from its peers, his peers, will have feedback from the market via several factors such as reading the news, tweets. And this is something that the machine will have to have access to in order to make better decisions. So we can foresee that in few years when the machine will be using this kind of additional data as well, its decisions will sooner or later outperform the decisions made by uh, even the best portfolio manager, I would say. Will the regular portfolio manager soon be out of a job? It depends on how you define soon, but sooner or later it will be uh, the case, I would say. But I wouldn't put it in the wrong, um, with a wrong sentiment. I would rather say that the transition between what we see today in a world where AI is doing most of the job will be smooth. So therefore there will be an, a, a process which is adapting you know, on a daily basis, it will be smooth and it will not be disruptive. I think many people are afraid that you know, one day to the other AI will be ruling the market. But this is probably not going to happen. It's very unlikely. So I would envision more of a transition and then people would not be out of a job because they would somehow find other niches where they can uh, use their skills. What are the major positive and negative effects artificial intelligence will have on our lives for the future? Yes, I can think of many positives and I think that all the negative aspects again are a matter of perception and a matter of what the media is uh, publishing and advertising about AI. But what I can tell you is that in the immediate, AI will be helping us in solving problems such as cutting uh, electricity bills, as you have seen from the news that uh, Google DeepMind is trying to do in the UK. And in inevitably, it will change how we do door-to-door uh, -door transportation, right? So if you have to deliver a package, usually you rely to a truck driver or uh, people which are in the business of moving stuff from point A to point B. And this can be fully automated. And that means that it will be safer. Machines don't get tired. 
and it will be highly efficient. At the same time though, people that are in the business of doing that, they will be replaced somehow. And they, they will feel that they have no, not their job anymore. But I think that this is just shifting towards a world where these people can do something else. Because let's face it, many of these people don't like what they're doing. And if AI can take on heavy duties, heavy labor, make the world a safe place, I think we should all embrace it and try to find other things to do.